Welcome, friends and enemies, to the second episode of Non-Binary Knits. I'm Latining. You can find me on Ravelry as Latining. And I have a pattern store called non and Designs, which will be profiled probably next episode when I release some new patterns. For today, we're going to be talking about other people's patterns. Um, so I took a year off after releasing my first episode. It's okay, you can laugh, it's funny. Um, and that's because I have a really bad habit of getting really into knitting and doing things like forgetting to take breaks or just really wanting to finish a pattern. So I'll knit on it for like four or six hours a day for a couple of days. So I keep giving myself tendonitis. Um, and that's why you haven't seen a lot of me, <laughs> and I'm trying really hard not to do that this year. Um, without much success, I tried to finish four pairs of socks inside of like two and a half months, and I had to take two months off knitting. So I'm not going to do that again. But in the year that I was recovering, I still managed to finish projects here and there, so that's what I'm going to be profiling today. Starting up, the Freya Cowl, another one by Caitlin French, and this is knit in loops and, thread, loops and threads braid big in teal. The gauge is a little bit thicker, like it's a thicker yarn than is recommended for the pattern because I wanted something really big and thick and heavy to put on if I want to like sit on my balcony in the winter. This is really nice to pull on over a sweater and just like wrap a blanket over yourself and sit outside in the minus 30 degree Celsius weather because I'm crazy like that. So I'm just gonna take off my glasses and try it on for you. You can see just how big and cozy it is. And yeah, it is, I'm gonna take this off soon because it's August. There is a really nice uh, ribbing edge at the bottom that gives you a lot more um, movement than you would otherwise have. It is kind of restricted around your shoulders, like put on some fingerless gloves and like read a book or something. Um, don't try and like play rugby in this. I don't know why you would, but if you would be playing rugby in this, take it off first. Um, specifically, I love this really bright teal stripe that comes through this. I normally don't buy big box yarn, but I fell in love with this, and yeah, I quite like it. So yeah, I really like this. It's very warm and cozy. Don't recommend wearing it in August, though. Oh, and I modified the pattern so that it is, it was top down instead of bottom up, I think. Or the other way around, I cannot remember. Um, and I modified the increases so they go up the side, so I have a little bit more room around my shoulders because, I don't know if you can tell, but I have fairly broad shoulders. So yeah. Like all of Caitlin French's patterns, it's really easy, really simple. Um, it's a $6 Ravelry download. I'm pretty sure it's in Canadian dollars. And I mean, I love her stuff. I would recommend all of her patterns which is why I made, sort of, another version of her Terribly Simple. This is um, my own version, and I'm probably going to put it up as a free Ravelry download because um, one of my hobbies is learning languages and have a lot of friends who are knitters in other countries, um, and I think it would be really fun for them to have a pattern, like my first English pattern, which can also be my first Japanese pattern or my first French pattern. Um, so yeah, it's a very simple one row pattern. Um, it's pretty much the same as uh, Caitlin French is terribly simple, which is because it's basically just a recipe for a top down shawl. Um, I changed the increases on the sides so the yarn overs close by knitting through the back loop instead of doing a knit front and back, and I changed the cast on edge so it's a little bit um, wider because, I'll turn it around to the other side, there's no other side, what am I doing? When you wrap it around your neck you get this fold underneath um, 
your throat there and that's really good for keeping out a cold breeze. So I just made it so there's a little bit more of a fold because this is definitely more of a scarf than a shawl. And yeah, you saw me profile Caitlin French's the last episode. This is my own version. I will be going up at some point. And I really love small, simple, like, necker bits for using up single skeins of sock yarn. I had no idea what I was going to do with this. It's uh, a discontinued colorway. It's Knit Picks Hawthorne in Laurelhurst, which is just a bunch of really nice summery greens. It looks kind of teal here, but it's not. Um, but really nice summery greens and just shot through with like shades of gold and sand and it is beautiful. So you can tell I wear a lot of um, black and monochrome colors so I really like having a little knitted something to bring up, to, to make everything pop, to tie my outfit together. Which is where we're coming into Copilot, which I made like a year ago and I've been wearing pretty much non-stop so you're going to see a little bit of fuzzing on it but keep in mind that you are seeing this after it has held up through a year of intensive wear. So I think that's pretty impressive. That's one of the reasons why I like knitting um, scarves and whatnot out of sock yarns. They just, in my experience, hold up a lot better than anything made with um, something softer. If I want to do something for a nice occasion, I'll use like cashmere and silk and whatever, but if it's just something that I'm tossing on to throw over my jacket for like three months out of the year at least, it's going to be sock yarn. It needs the durability. Um, another thing about Copilot and this yarn in particular, this is another Hawthorne because it's my favorite sock yarn, which we'll talk about later, um, but this, there, like a little sash. So this is Copilot. It's one of the free patterns by Dominique Trad, and I recommend the whole series unreservedly. They're just great for really showcasing um, the potential of variegated sock yarn. If you want something that shows off how good it looks in the ball, I really recommend her, I think, Pilot, Copilot, and Autopilot patterns, which are similar to this, just weighted for different um, types of yarn. So this is knit in Hawthorne, in Knob Hill, which is a discontinued colorway. Um, you can, if you really like this, you can substitute Hawthorne Tonal in Silverton for this nice sort of lavender effect. Um, I love this. It has a bunch of different shades of purple and lavender and like mauve and mauve and taupe and whatnot and it is just beautiful. Now as you can tell from <laughs> the title I am non-binary and so sometimes I really like pastels like I'm a millennial okay so I've recorded and re-recorded this part about four times because I'm terrified of offending people and that's not good. I mean, that's why I made this podcast. Um, because the, the simple fact is that I shouldn't have to worry about the reception when I say that I don't identify as, fe as female and I don't want to be read as feminine. All it really means is that I don't like being addressed as lady or ma'am. Um, and just so we're clear, like, sir isn't great either. But that says nothing about other people, but a lot of people take that really personally. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've turned off comments, because if you're going to send me nasty <sighs> comments, just give me the views. Like, at least if you're going to send me nasty comments, please like and subscribe. Anyway. It's not really an issue in the knitting community at large, but sometimes it is. Um, it's very alienating when I go to a knitting group and everyone is talking, all of the women specifically, are talking about their husbands 
and what they're doing, what they're knitting for their husbands, and what their husbands think about what they're doing. Um, it's... nobody in my friends group is straight. Like, not a single person. So it's really, really strange walking into a room where I'm perceived to be not only straight, but a woman. And the way the women treat me, treat me, well, I'm sure it's intended to be welcoming, um, ends up, in fact, being very alienating. Um, if you're straight and you've never thought about this before, this is what's known as straight privilege. So that's the term you can Google if you want to know what it's like. And like any privilege, having it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or anything. It merely means that you have advantages in society because society is unequal and is set up to reward certain people for entirely arbitrary reasons. Um, that's society's fault, that's not your fault, so again, don't at me. So, back to knitting, because we're talking about Copilot and why this and this series is just an excellent, excellent pattern for non-binary people. So, it's a very simple pattern with simple lace, which, as I stated before, does a really great job of making variegated yarn shine. What's really nice about this is that just having it around your neck, whether you're wearing it as a cowl or like a scarf like I was doing earlier, it lets you incorporate a little pop of color in a way that you might not necessarily feel comfortable or confident doing otherwise. Um, like I said, I don't really care for pastels or for wearing pastels because I don't really like being read as a woman. But, I mean, one, this color was irresistible, just absolutely irresistible. So, but one, this color was just absolutely irresistible. And for two, I want to be able to wear like lavender and light like, pink if I want. Um, one of my friends is a guy and he's very, very stylish. And honestly, it's kind of been an inspiration to me because previously, um, I'm also a gamer. So I know a lot of straight men from that area. And one of the things you hear a lot is just this absolute fear and terror at dressing well or in anything other than jeans and a ratty graphic t-shirt because you'll be persecuted for wearing a colorful shirt or honestly a lot of it is straight people thinking there's something wrong with people thinking you might be queer and that's a problem. If you think someone thinking you're gay is a problem, that's something you need to sit with and you need to think about why. Um, and just for the record, I have spent a lot of my life being misidentified as a lesbian. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not insulting, it's just funny. But if you're so terrified of being seen as gay, that you can't wear a pink scarf to work, think about that. <laughs> anyway, and that's the thing! I have all of these judgments about straight men and I realized I was applying that same thing to myself. Um, and that's not okay because I need to get over myself as well. Um, but also I don't want to wear anything really big and lacy and floral and that. I mean, it's not really my style. For one, um, and for two, it's erroneously associated with um, the feminine, which honestly is not really my style. I've rambled about this a lot. <laughs> um, and I'm going to edit it slightly, but I want to leave this in because this is the sort of the internal process that I go through every day when I'm getting dressed, and this is what 
a lot of trans people go through. So I think it's a healthy illustration in... <laughs> I think it's a good illustration just for what our lives are like um, and the sort of strange ways that growing up in a society that doesn't recognize or accept you can leave you with... can leave you questioning your fashion choices. Um, which is another reason why I created this, because your body is fine and anything you want to put on it is fine as long as it, fr as long as it doesn't traumatize the children or scare the horses. So moving on. Oh, but seriously, this is so good. See, look at it, you can see a little bit of fuzzing and I've been wearing it constantly for a year. I take this with me everywhere, I just shove it in my purse. I'm not sure quite what blend Hawthorne is, but it's very durable. Which is why when I made my own clockwork by Stephen West, I did it in Hawthorne. This is what I bought when Hawthorne first came out, and I intended to use these yarns together the entire... Yeah, and I intended to use these yarns together the entire time. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, so East Bank, as you can see, that is this contrasting color that I used for the main color, has... It was described as the color of an estuary, and they were right. So there's some nice browns, some like tan, it's sort of gray toned. It's very hard to describe this color. It's sort of doing it justice. And the Irvington, um, they've since changed, I think, or I got very lucky and it was a it's the most one of the most tonal of um hawthorne fingering multi and as you can tell it was very very tonal there's a lot of um light almost periwinkle blue where is that yeah you can see the bits of light blue and then some parts that are almost as dark as navy and the whole effect is just incredible. I love it. So this, I haven't worn this yet, partly because I finished it in the middle of summer, and also partly because I wanted to show it off before I wore it and fuzzed it up. Um, if you'll give me a second, I'm fortunate enough to have the original one I made here, and I will be right back. All right, back after some technical issues to show off my, oops, here we go, to show off my completed uh, Hawthorne clockwork with the one I did, or I showcased the last episode. I wanted to show them together because I really love the sort of water and fire theme I have going accidentally, and I think this, it just shows incredibly, um, how one pattern can have such a different effect in different yarns. Hawthorne is a heavier fingering weight and the hot socks and stroll that I used for the first clockwork is a lighter fingering weight, so this one is a little bit lighter than the one I made in Hawthorne, although of course they're still both garter stitch fingering, so they're fairly light. Also, one of the things I love about garter stripes is that the right side and the wrong side look exactly the same for the most part. See, there's the right side, and the wrong side, you just have slightly different stripes. I think it's great. Oh, um, and I did the same modification that I used on the first one, where I did um, double knitting. For the stripes because I wanted it to be fully reversible, which is a mod I think everyone should do because I think it's just a shame when you put all of that work into making something and it only looks good from one side. Says the person who is about to start an elaborately cabled scarf in the winter. 
So these are my gauge swatch socks. They are knit in Knit Picks Felici in Tyrian. And you may recognize them from my shame bucket from last episode, last year. And that's how long it took me to weave in the ends. It's two years to weave in the ends on these socks. You can laugh. It's funny. Uh, as you can see, I do prefer a longer leg cuff because I live in the frigid Northlands. And yeah, this is my standard gauge swatch sock, which I so named because I hate doing gauge swatches and I want to know exactly how long I need to knit the foot and whatnot while I'm making the sock. So this pattern is designed so you start from the toe you work from the toe up and then once you have about an inch or so, like two inches worked, that's where you measure your gauge swatch and you have, uh, and it includes numerical counts for the heel and the gusset and whatnot so you know exactly how long all of those are going to be and you can calculate um, how long the foot needs to be which I is basically just a compilation of my notes, but I made it look all pretty and professional. Um, and it is just fantastic for Felici. It's my standard Felici pattern um, because I really like showing off these colors. I think they're fantastic. So yeah, and this is uh, the heels, toes, and cuffs are knit out of Stroll, Stroll Glimmer in Chrome which is a discontinued colorway of Stroll Glimmer. I don't know why, because in my opinion, it's the perfect neutral. Um, I have two more balls of it that I was going to use to make socks, but the more I think about it, the more I think I'm going to hang on to it and use it for, um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just hang on to it and use it for heels and toes for like everything in Felici. See, it sparkles. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. A little bit. One of the things I like about Chrome is that it is actually quite a subtle sparkle. There. Toes are kind of going. Anyway. And now I'm going to re-record that socks portion because the whole last bit was a hot mess. And now, the socks that I finished uh, shortly after filming my first episode and have been wearing for like a year. So you can see a little bit of fuzzing on them. This is just a simple toe-up sock pattern with a boomerang heel and a one by one twisted one by one twisted rib for the cuff. Ta-da! If you're interested in knitting something like this, um, you can find the pattern for the heel in my amethyst socks and just omit uh, the patterning on amethyst. The patterning on amethyst is just a very simple um, knit and purl horizontal rib. These are knit in Hawthorne Multi in sport weight and one skein got me just enough for a pair of shorty socks. So you compare that to what I got from one skein of Hawthorne Fingering, and you can see these are definitely a little bit shorter and smaller than what I like out of my socks. Now, this pattern is Simply Vanilla from Softopus by Alice Yu. And this is essentially a top-down gauge swatch for Hawthorne to see how I liked a 64 stitch sock, uh, just plain vanilla. And I like it just fine. Um, I like top-down heels, but um, 
the way her math is set up, um, the heel isn't... The heel is not perfectly even, and that bothers me, but that is the only complaint I have about the pattern. Um, the whole book is really good, and I'll probably do a review of it a little bit later. Um, for a later episode or something, I'll cover some of my favorite sock books. So yeah, this is in Hawthorne Speckle in City Lights, which I bought on a whim because I found the yarn just amazing. There's a lot of... there you go. There's just this neon green and these little flecks of yellow and it is absolutely beautiful. And these have been washed and dried no fewer than 20 times since I made them, so. You can also see right there where, when I tried them on to photograph them, I knocked one drop of tea onto my foot and it stained the socks forever. It doesn't matter, I wear them all the time and I get compliments on these a lot. One of the things I love about self-striping and speckled yarn is that people who don't knit just blow, like it blows their mind. They think it's amazing. Like, people seem to treat self-striping sock yarn as the same sort of like magical impossibility as striped paint, and I don't want to tell them that it's just space dyed. <laughs> like, I think they think that I just like knit out of a ball of yarn and somehow I do something that makes the yarn magically change colors and I don't really have the heart to tell them that they do that at the factory for me. <laughs> but people are lovely, I'm glad they like my socks. Um, finally, I have Speckled Space Socks by Amanda Stevens, which is a free Ravelry download. And these are knit in Hawthorne Blueberry Speckle and have also been washed and dried at least 20 times. Probably more than that. Probably closer to 30 or 40. You can tell that this one came out a lot more speckly than this one, which happens sometimes. Some people don't like that. I don't have a problem with it. I like having um, paternal twins. This pattern was really great. Um, I found, I just zoomed through the foot and then ran into a wall on the leg because this middle stitch, it isn't that bad, but it's a little bit annoying to figure out. And two repeats of this was enough in the round. That was enough. I went from being really excited to sit down and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put in like 20 or 30 rows on my socks today, that's what I'm gonna do, to like having to sit down and agree to do like one of these bits by bribing myself with other stuff. And that wasn't great, um, sometimes I'm just a whiny bitch about patterns. So that's nothing against the pattern designer. I just found it fiddly and I wasn't in the mood for fiddly. Um, that said, I love them and I will probably make this pattern again. Possibly not in a speckled yarn. I think a tonal or possibly even a variegated could look really, really good. Um, and also I try not to be that person who just makes the same like three patterns over and over because like deep in my heart I want to be that person and I just need to branch out and that's fine. All right, so my final socks are Almondine by Anne Hansen and the pattern can be found in Sock Knitting Masterclass. It's a really simple eight stitch, 16 row lace repeat and I knit them in Kobasi Multi-Tonal in charcoal. I don't, I do like how the yarn sort of stripes. I do not like um, the way it sort of eats the pattern, but the pattern and the, <clears throat> the pattern and the yarn were picked out. These are a gift for a friend. So he likes them, and that's great. 
This is a really great unisex pattern as well. Um, I really like lace and I like knitting lace and wearing lace, but a lot of lace patterns are really elaborate and this loops right back into me not necessarily wanting to be identified as a woman. So things that are really simple, um, it's silly that simplicity is considered a masculine trait, isn't it? It's kind of sexist. Men are simple, women are complicated. That's messed up. Anyway, so socks. Really nice, simple pattern. What I'm looking for is simplicity. I don't care if it has flowers on it, as long as it's like a nice abstract flower. Um, I don't have the pattern here, but I knit uh, Fiori de Zuga from Soctopus, and I loved knitting them. Um, they were a blast. It was the, that lace sweet spot where it looks really complicated, but it's really easy to get the repeat down. And so I just flew through them. And I put them on and I was like, nope, not for me. And that's too bad. Fortunately, I have friends who will wear that, so I still get to make it. But it would be nice um, for designers to... Simple patterns aren't just for beginners. And there's a lot of elegance in simplicity. And I'm absolutely certain that designers can work to fill that. I mean, there's like 15,000 reinas or something that people have made and like 3,000 hitchhikers or something, maybe 30,000, I don't know. But the point is there are a lot of really simple patterns on Ravelry that are really popular. Um, and a lot of people seem to think that they're popular because they're good for beginners, but really they're popular because they're great all-purpose garments. And I would really love to see more of that from designers. So if anyone here is sitting here thinking like, oh, well, I have some ideas, but I don't know, like everyone buys this really complicated stuff. No, I want it. Hi, I'm, I'm a customer of one and I'm telling you I'll buy your stuff. So please. Um, and then I guess we'll move on to whips. This is my one whip, my half finished object. I haven't woven the ends in yet, just in case I decide to, I don't know, rip out the toe or something. I never weave the ends in on my socks um, until I'm, until I know I'm going to finish both of them to the same specifications. Cause you don't want to have to sit there like trying to unpick your stitches. So this is my own cuff down pattern. This is in Hawthorne Speckle in tie-dye. And until now I didn't understand why people complained about speckled yarn looking dirty. Um, but I can see, I still disagree with them, um, but looking at this I can see where they're coming from. It's, the picture on the Knitpicks website does not do it justice. It looks exactly like Funfetti cake when it's knit up. I'm gonna make a little Funfetti cake slice cat toy uh, out of the leftovers. And it's so fun! This is another yarn that I bought because it was on sale for like 30% off or something and I was like, oh that's cute! Um, but I really like it. Um, you may be noticing a theme in that a lot of the socks that I like to wear are a little more like avant-garde and all of that and I'm absolutely one of those people who is like black or like other dark or neutral colors from like head to toe and then I have wild socks. That's I've been that person since I was like 10 years old and I'm over 30 so I'm clearly not going to stop. So these Funfetti socks are just perfect for me. This is what it looks like. This is what the yarn looks like in the ball. And that does a better job of showing off the colors in it. And this is what it looks like knit up. See? Neat, huh? 
Yeah. So I like it. Um, this is part of my gauge swatch project where this is a 64 stitch sock knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a size down from what I normally use. So this is Hawthorne, but knit at a gauge that will give me something akin to what I have on my Felici socks. I could actually compare them and they're about the same, give or take. Hawthorne is a little stretchier and has a little bit more dew. My standard sock pattern is to just keep everything even and simple. Um, and I go by fractions. So I'm making a 64 stitch sock and I generally use uh, Magic Loop Method. So that so the front and back is 32 stitches. Half of that is 16, so I work a cuff for 16 stitches and I work my heel flap for 32. I work my leg for 64 and my foot for however long as it needs to be when I'm going cuff down. Um, and that, yeah, I like the results. I think this is gonna be a little bit smaller than some of my other ones, but that's fine. And yeah, I don't, one of the things I like about Hawthorne that other people hate is that it has, I think, 326 meters per 100 grams, which is about 100 meters short of other sock yarns, which is a considerable shortage in yardage. Um, but my feet are size six and a half. So I have tiny footsies. And I don't really like buying sock yarn and having like 25 grams left over. I always feel like I'm like wasting a bit because I never, I don't make sock yarn blankets or anything. So I pretty much never use it. It just sits around. So yeah, the thing I like about Hawthorne is that I can get one pair of socks out of it and I'll have maybe like five grams, between five and 10 grams left over. And that's enough for like a little cat toy and then it's done or it's a small enough amount left over that I don't feel guilty throwing it out. Um, I finished one pair of cabled socks for a friend and I had less than a meter left after I bound off. I felt so accomplished. So um, that's actually something I look for in a sock yarn. Some people look for um, stuff that is like 475 yards per 100 grams or whatever. But for something like that, I'm going to have to knit it on really tiny needles to get a um, sock density that I like. So it ends up being a worse value for me. Um, anyway, I'm just putting that out there so people can, because it's a different opinion. Um, most people do look for sock yarns based by yardage, and I'm aware of that. Um, but what I really need is something hard wearing that will last and that won't leave me with a ton of leftovers. So Hawthorne's sort of mid-weight, uh, he like heavyweight fingering, extremely light sport is just perfect for me. Also, I'm Canadian, so I need socks that are thick and warm. So I'm a mod of the Geek Swap group, which is really exciting. We're currently in the middle of our space swap. If you messaged me on Ravelry and I haven't responded, that's why. I've been busy with that. Um, so what you do is you sign up for a swap. <laughs> um, you have to sign up, that's the first part. <laughs> so you sign up and then you'll, you fill out a questionnaire of like why you're interested in the subject, what parts you like about it. So for example, with the space swap, some of the questions are like, do you have a favorite planet? Or what space-themed media do you really enjoy? Because it would be silly to knit something like Star Trek themed for someone who has never seen the show. These are the things you need to know in advance. So you fill out some questions and then after about two weeks, you are given a swap partner. And this is all anonymized. The mod, uh, Shililiqui, I think. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, is currently running this one and she's doing a great job. So I received my anonymous swap partner and now I'm reading all of their questions and I'm going through the Ravelry Projects page 
and I'm trying to figure out what I should make for them. So of course, if I'm doing a swap, the question remains, well, if it's secret, why am I podcasting about it? Exactly! So what I'm going to do is make a separate podcast specifically for Geek Swap, and I'm going to show off the yarn and what I'm thinking of doing and my knitting process, and I'm going to finish it by opening my swap package and talking about that. Like, the one I receive, so you'll get to see me making all of it and talking about what I'm putting in, and then you can, at the very very end, you can go and see what I got. So I think that'll be fun. And that's probably what I'm going to do for a video um, anytime I do a swap, I think. Because it's not fair, I think, to be like, okay, if you were watching me, now like, leave for 20 minutes, just skip past it on YouTube. Like, come on. Do you have that self-restraint? I don't have that self-restraint. So, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and other than that, we shall see. I finished a bunch of patterns um, that I'm currently in the process of tech edi editing. So sometime later, I'm probably going to do a knit along for that as well. Um, and that'll be really fun. So I'll post the show notes in my Ravelry group if you're looking for any information or the patterns or whatever that I'm making. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can just contact me. Again, I'm Latining on Ravelry. It's super easy to find me. So take care and happy knitting and let me know. Send me a message if you have any questions or comments or post in the thread because I don't bite, I just have strong opinions. Bye!